Hi. <clears throat> well, I just ate a bunch of Mexican food, so I feel a little fat. <laughs> it's really good Mexican food. Um, okay, hey, welcome back. Here we are. Uh, thank you for joining me with my cup of tea. Ah, somewhere to put that. So, um, I guess first of all, I, I want to welcome everyone uh, who's tuning in. Uh, apparently, it's not just a bunch of antisocial burnouts <laughs> that that will look at my videos. Apparently, it's uh, a lot of friends and family and, and neighbors. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, just please know that I miss you and I love you guys. And, you know, apparently this is how a lot of my family members in Colorado stay in touch with me. They, they quietly watch me <laughs> and occasionally comment. And that's absolutely fine, but uh, if you want to comment more, please, I'd love to hear uh, what anybody's thoughts about my uh, ramblings uh, affect them, I guess. Yeah, I'm losing my train of thought already. It's a bad sign. Okay, so... Um, the little one is in the garage with the other little one. Um, my wife's car is, is outside. She's being very nice, uh, letting me uh, put this in here. Uh, she was, of course, out of town for like a week, and so I took advantage of that. Um, and before that, I was out of town. Uh... I had finished up doing the work on uh, the Honda engine. Uh, it had a cracked timing chain uh, case cover, which was also structurally part of the uh, engine mount. And so I replaced that, and um, against some advice, I did not swap out the, the timing chain while I, while I was doing that because... Um, According to all the measurements that I did, the thing is dead on in spec. I mean, it's, I don't know if it was changed before, um, but it's, it's in fantastic condition. And also during that time, I also, uh, and I'll do a little cutaway so you guys can get a better view of this engine. Uh, I, I, you know, adjusted all the valves. And my God, I, I really <laughs> enjoy working on this Honda engine. It is, it is such a, it's so well engineered and so designed for easy maintenance. Uh, it's, it's just a joy. Um, and also, I didn't, I didn't, I thought maybe perhaps this was me, but when I popped off the valve cover, I mean, I've popped off valve covers off, I don't know how many engines, mo cars, motorcycles, everything. And most of the time, Especially with something like that has 200,000 miles on it, you are expecting uh, sort of a burnt oil residue on everything. Just, just from time and build up. The thing looks brand new inside. And I don't know, maybe that's just the way the Hondas are. I don't know. I've, I've seen other videos where, you know, guys are adjusting valves on their Honda Fits. And they are similarly clean, so I don't know what... Honda did, but, you know, <laughs> hats off to you. And adjusting these valves was so simple. And it's just a joy to do. Uh, it's, it's really hard to screw it up if you just take your time. So, okay. And also, uh, to come back to everyone that's, that's watching, um, I will try to, you know, leave a lot of my... Uh, you know, bummer views about uh, this uh, society that we're living in. Uh, and, I, and I know that's part of just, you know, my personality uh, that I express, but a lot of times people come in here just to be entertained, and that's totally fine too. So I will try to keep some of that stuff to a, a minimum. Uh, and my neighbors, also, uh, if any of you neighbors are bored and would like something to do, I will just 
you know, hand out that little olive branch of welcome uh, to just come on up and hang out with me. You're absolutely welcome to come on up, hang out, work on the car with me, or just, you know, shoot the poop, whatever. It's, it's always nice to see a friendly face. So, uh, yeah. Anyway. Moving on. Sipping tea. So, uh, before I left on my little jaunt to Colorado, um, what I wanted to do was uh, upgrade uh, the braking system as well because it has very old uh, sliding wedge uh, calipers on the front, which are effective, but there's just, you know, they are just like a, a maintenance thing, whereas the more modern ones are less maintenance intensive and just as effective, or if not more so. But uh, the car also had rear drums. And I just like disc brakes all around. And, and so I started thinking, okay, well, um, perhaps Fiat, in their wisdom or laziness or whatever, uh, possibly their approach to uh, componentry, uh, carried through uh, to present day. Uh, because a lot of like, I have like Fiat Abarth uh, brakes on the, on the Lancia Scorpion, and it was really easy to fit them. And I thought, well, you know, you know Fiat still carries, you know, forward with the 4x98 uh, hubs, which, you know, they, they started way back in the 50s. And so I thought, well, the new Fiat 500, not the Abarth model, but, you know, just the, uh, the lounge model or the pop version. Uh, they don't have, like, the huge brakes. And for something like this, which weighs hundreds of pounds, even less than the Scorpion, uh, I thought, absolutely, that would be more than enough braking. So I went to a pick-and-pull yard up in the Bay Area, uh, just expecting that, you know, I, I'd be able to pull off, you know, these parts because of, that was really the only Fiat I was able to find around here. Went up there, and the lady at the pick and pull yard, she, I don't know, maybe she didn't like the cut of my jib, but, or maybe she's just feeling pressure from the company, because it's a big corporation, to really uh, charge me just blindly for everything. And... I spent, you know, like a good hour, hour and a half pulling the parts off and then dragging them up to the front. And she came up with a tally of over $400 for used, chunked up brake parts. I mean, it was like chunked up with like dirt and stuff like that, just from whatever. $400 for brake parts, which, I mean, I, I would have been, you know, very comfortable with like 150 $200 at the most, because, you know, I know this stupid, uh, greedy in inflation has affected uh, so many uh, shops, but they wanted $400, and, you know, to her credit, she was nice enough to kind of go through me, through, you know, all the items with me, and explain to me in good detail why they thought that it was so valuable, but at the end of the day, I was just like, no, I, I cannot spend $400 unused, you know, components. And maybe I'm just, maybe I'm not unrealistic, but I'm a cheap skate. Let's call it that. So anyway, I had an opportunity to go out to Colorado. Unfortunately, it was for a funeral for um, the father of my older brothers, who their father married my mom and uh, had them, and then they got divorced and married my dad and had me and my brother. Anyway, he passed away, and he was a great guy. And uh, he was kind of a scary guy, because he was, you know, kind of one of those strong, silent type. But um, he started talking more in the end, and he was just, he was just a wonderful guy. No, 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 uh, you know, doubt about it. Anyway, so out there, yes, they have a pick and pull yard out in Colorado. So I went out there and I got all the parts for $200, <laughs> which is fine. It's fine. Um, unfortunately, 
Um, they have, yeah, they had two Fiats out there. They had like a, they had an Abarth model with the, the red calipers. Um, but in my research, uh, the uh, front calipers on a Fiat Abarth are different. They're sized for the uh, for larger rotors, um, but the the rear rotors are identical to the Abarth. And unfortunately, on the, the regular Fiat, they weren't. Um, they, it was already taken care of, taken and gone. So I pulled the rear, enti the entire rear hubs, off of the Fiat 500, the Fiat Abarth. So I got the you know the, the snazzy red calipers. Um, and I just I bought the whole spindle assembly. Because um, really that was the easiest way to remove it. Uh, just four bolts and, uh, you know, removing brake lines and boom, these come right off. Uh, so yeah, I've got basically all the components to um, swap over to disc brakes on the Fiat 128. And I was, I was hoping, I was hoping against hope <laughs> that Fiat maintained this bolt pattern. And I thought, just you know, maybe why not? It's it's worth a shot. That maybe I could just, you know, magically take off the drum brakes, and there'd be a similar bolt pattern, and I could just slam these on, bolt them right up, and you know, away I go. Even with even with newer um, bearings and everything, whatever. Uh, so I got back here and I started disassembling the brakes, and this is the. Uh, uh, this is the backing plate that mounts the uh, the cylinder and everything like that. This mounts to the the spindle assembly on the on the disc brake hub, and uh, so yeah, it's uh, not the same bolt pattern, not not even close enough to to fudge it, and that's fine. Um, but really, uh, and you and you can kind of see like this caliper is you know it's just sitting on this wheel. This is just kind of being held on by friction of the old pads. Uh, and I just threw the, uh, the Fiat 500 brake, uh, brake rotor on the back. And this is a 240 millimeter rotor. And that's, I think that's more than plenty for how little this car weighs. Um, I'm going to be able to essentially, all, all I really need to do is using uh, you know, this bolt pattern and more of this steel. I got a bunch more of this steel. Not a bunch, but enough to make more uh, 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 caliper adapters. Basically, using this uh, bolt pattern and, you know, the bolt pattern that uh, bolts the calipers on, uh, using some 7 16 inch thick uh, cold rolled steel, uh, just make some adapters. And I did all the, the measurements, and it'll just bolt up almost perfectly. So stay tuned for some very slow band sawing <laughs> with the Milwaukee Porta Band. Anyway, uh, so yeah, um, I got yeah these uh, Fiat 500 spindles, and they're completely useless to me, but that's okay. Maybe someone else could use them. Um, right. And so the front uh, calipers uh, for the Fiat Lounge and Fiat, just the regular standard Fiat 500, um, these will bolt right up to the fronts. All I really need to do is uh, enlarge the, uh, the caliper bolt holes uh, just a slight bit up to this larger size bolt. And there's plenty of meat on them for that. I did that with the uh, Lancia Scorpion, and it's it just takes time. Um, however, the uh, just the standard Fiat 500 uh, front rotors are 257 millimeter rotors, and that's fine for a Fiat 500, the new one. But uh, how this placement works out, um, I would need the Abarth uh, front calipers, the taller front mounting calipers, to mount the, the 257 millimeter rotors on the front. So I was able to find uh, late model Fiat 
panda rotors are the vented, you know, thicker brake discs uh, rotors, and uh, they'll just throw right on there, and they uh, clock in at 240 millimeters also. And there's just a a tiny, tiny little bit of rubbing that will happen, and it's just a, the tiniest little bit of clearancing on the calipers is is required. But yeah, there's nothing that is going to affect anything. It's it's just you can see where the casting line when they when they cast it, and uh, that that was like the only interference. So you know that'll be nice to have everything kind of bolt up and work that way. Um, I don't know if you can see, but I removed the rear bumper off the uh, back of the 128 here. And, uh, and I don't know. Uh, I, can, uh, I can dowel you over a little bit. I don't know how I feel about going completely bare, bare butt no no bumper at all kind of thing I might just do I mean you know I still have the original I still have the the uh, bumper mounts I'm tempted to at least just do like you know like use some exhaust tubing or whatever with like a you know 90 degree radius corners and at least just do a simple bar that you know, kind of bolts on to the uh, the stubs of the uh, the bumper sticking out because I mean it just looks like it's just there's nothing back here. Anyway, oh, and also I got off my button, uh, swapped in the other uh, control arm that I got. Uh, so yeah, everything is is bolted together nicely on that. Um, yeah, so I guess we can move on to looking at the engine bay because we pulled that uh, Fiat uh, 128 engine. So. All right, so here we are. This is the Fiat engine bay with no Fiat 1300 engine in it. It is a little dirty from uh, 40 years of sitting around in a field. That's fine. Uh, look how... Uh, just ridiculously fragile this suspension looks uh, just you know the control arm uh, being you know connected to the sway bar which is an integral part of the suspension I mean it, it is anyway in any car but this is like this is half the suspension <laughs> um, yeah it just is so delicate designed um, you know, for a super lightweight car, it doesn't need to be much more than that, but it's kind of crazy. Uh, need to do a little bit of work here on the sway bar mounting because you can kind of see how the plate is pulled away from the uh, the body of the car uh, or the frame of the car. Uh, so, yeah, I got to have to deal with that. But I'm really surprised that it's not worse. But, yeah, last, you know, famous last words, right? Uh, this side is a little rusty. Also, uh, it being underneath the battery area, but it looks to be mostly just surface rust. Yeah, right. Anyway, uh, so yeah, uh, there's plenty of room. Uh, we'll see how this uh, brake booster and brake master cylinder uh, kind of integrate with the Fiat engine transmission and all that stuff together. Uh, it's you know, work for another day, but uh, we'll we'll just deal with that as that comes. All right. Um, so yeah, I need to uh, essentially make some uh, make a jig of the points on the Honda Fit engine bay that connect the uh, engine mounts together, and then take that jig, which will be like a pipe with like some uh, plates uh, with bolt holes and sort of, you know, bring it into there and see where best to, uh, to put everything. 
and then this guy can go in there. Look at how clean that is. Oh, the new plate. <laughs> and I deleted the uh, air conditioning uh, compressor out the front and uh, put in a shorter serpentine belt. Super simple. And uh, yeah, everything just looks really good on this engine. And it started right up even in its compromised state in the uh, in the crashed vehicle. So, huh. Oh, yeah. And I'll show you one other thing. Yeah, I, was, I meant to mention this earlier. Uh, I took out the, uh, the exhaust system from this car. And never really understood you know, why back in the old days, uh, I mean, there's a little light in here, and there was a little thermal couple going into this, uh, where the light would come on if the catalytic converter got, plug got plugged up, and it would get super hot, and uh, then you would, I guess, have to replace your catalytic converter or have a fire. Um, I, and I had to look this up. I, I. I mean, I, I look at the uh, the new uh, catalytic converters, and you look down into them, and it is like this matrix of like a kind of a grid that is extruded, you know, all the way through uh, the catalytic converter, and so exhaust gas flows in there and flows through this grid, uh, being exposed to all the uh, expensive precious metals that everybody all the criminals want to steal out of your car. <laughs> um, in the old days, uh, when they were first coming up with this, uh, because this was 1976, it was towards the end of uh, leaded gasoline. Um, their solution, what they came up with, were uh, catalytic converters uh, that contained uh, pellets. And these pellets were like this uh, aluminum oxide kind of pellet with, uh, you know, the precious metals uh, kind of uh, embedded in the pellets. And so uh, these pellets got packed into sort of like a, a bed in here really tightly. And the exhaust gas was supposed to enter one side and I guess kind of percolate up through and somehow flow through all these pellets and then, you know, get cleaned and exit. And apparently one of the issues is through time and heat and vibration and everything like that, these little aluminum pellets, they uh, crumble and break apart. And of course, you know, exhaust gas and everything is forcing them uh, through the, the matrix and it and rust and stuff like that are clogging up uh, these metal screens which hold all these pellets together in place. And so that's what would happen when uh, they would clog up. They, they would just, all these little pieces would clog up and, uh, you know, your engine wouldn't flow any gases through it and it would overheat and either cause a fire or just plug up the car. It seems insane, <laughs> honestly. Um, and and I was just, you know, I'm just putting this out there. If you have a car of this vintage and it has one of these style catalytic converters on it, these, according to most sources, just flow crappily just horribly. I would strongly recommend upgrading to a modern, uh, you know, sort of grid matrix uh, catalytic converter. Uh, just, it'll clean up the gas just as much, if not better, and will not be anywhere near as restrictive as, as what this is. And I guess these were designed uh, so that, uh, yeah, if they got Plugged up, you know. You could just take this to the dealership, and they could empty out all the all the pellets and put fresh pellets in, and you know, on your way, kind of thing. But 
yeah, it just doesn't seem to be a, a, a great design. So that's all I had to say. Um, anyway, uh, so yeah, this was just a little update. Uh, things are happening, and um, I don't know if it's necessary for me to share this. I'm going to be doing some acting, and uh, my buddy's uh, little uh, short uh, film short feature uh, be like a, a you know 15 minute short, and uh, I'm playing kind of a bad guy, good guy thing. Anyway, uh, more on that later. Anyway, so anyway, uh, I'm happy, I'm healthy, and I hope all of you out there are too. It's just a cuckoo banana world that we live in, but uh, everything's going to be all right. It, everything, for the most part, is all right. I think it just everything seems worse than it is. Maybe not. Maybe society's going to hell in a handbasket. And, it's time to light our hair on fire. Too late. Uh, but uh, just know that there are good people in this world. And most good people, most people are the good people in this world. And we can't be afraid of saying hello to them. Um, what I try to do, I try to not live my life like an asshole or a jerk. And I think most people are like me. Um, what I really do try to do is when I go out, I try to envision every man and every woman, every, you know, boy, girl, whatever I see, I try to look upon them as my brother and sister. Or, you know, my best friend. Imagine if, if everyone did that. If everyone went out with sort of the intention and the expectation that everyone that they were going to see is, could be their brother and sister or their best friend out there. And imagine how amazing that would be. And, you know, our brother and sisters aren't perfect people. <laughs> and sometimes we don't like them. Sometimes we hate them, but we still love them, for the most part. <laughs> um, and so, I'm just, I'll put that out there and say, maybe give that a shot. Instead of, you know, imagining that the world is full of horrible people who are just there to do you wrong, or do you harm, or do your family harm, See if you can go out and imagine them as great people because it really affects them weirdly when you do that. They, it takes them off guard and they feel, that I've had so many people just open up to me who, they don't know me from anyone, but I think they sometimes feel that I'm not treating them poorly or suspiciously or whatever. But you do have to not be stupid. And if you get that vibe that someone is, is, is not good, listen to your intuition. But don't just plaster everyone with the you know, jerk asshole tag because you're just going to treat them badly or close yourself off to them and, and they feel it. So anyway, I love you all. Thank you for joining me. And I'll see you next time. <laughs> <laughs>